will consist of hearing from your team leaders. Um, the journey, as they were all once students just like you, um, what that uh, journey has been like for them, um, and, and, and where they are today, which is regularly funding deals, regularly looking at, at, at um, funding applications, figuring out the trends of what type of files fund, what type of files are a waste of time, and just kind of gathering for yourselves and hearing it from them, right, what that experience has been like to give you an idea of what that experience can be like for you. Uh, but in, I believe Gavin had posted this afternoon, you know, uh, don't forget in order to, to experience the gains, you're going to have to go through the pain first, right? And, and that's very much part of it, which is indicative of how things are in life. We all know that to be true, right? It's not easy, right? You have to dig in, you have to go through the bumps, you have to gain experience. But if those willing to go through that process, to not skip that process, you will be successful. You will get to the other side, okay? Um, so, so really to start, um, I guess, Christopher Van Buren, you're there. We'll, we'll start with you. Hey, how's it going, everybody going? Terrific. Hey, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you. And Christopher, if you could just put into your own words just your experience first getting into to broking, um, the uh, business funding side, the real estate investment funding side, um, sort of the beginner mistakes, the, the, the stumbles, whatever it was, and then how you overcame those challenges and, and how the, the, the landscape is different with that experience under your belt. Okay. Well, you know, background prior to uh, first getting introduced to uh, Gavin um, earlier this year, I was doing, I was in the business phone space a little bit prior to, was uh, doing, you know, a lot of Facebook marketing, Facebook advertising, um, well, you know, as all things, you know, you're following the trends. Um, business loan brokering, you know, had to, it had its highs and lows. It literally was kind of getting into the groove. Um, what I realized um, in the process of being a salesperson, um, both on my own and transitioning, falling over to Ion, is that literally it was like, it takes time to build up relationships. Um, I had to speak to enough people to get a fair idea, understanding of what's needed in the marketplace, and then be able to successfully deliver that message. Um, I think anybody that's new in any type of system, when you're first speaking with your first one or two uh, clients, has a sense of hesitation. And I believe that clients can pick up on that immediately. So, you know, until I had the confidence to say, well, I know what I know, and I know that I know more than you do, um, it wasn't until I changed my tonality where I started started seeing some effects. So fast forward, March of 2020, you know, I see Gavin's post talking about organic lead generation. So I've already spent money on regular lead generation. We're talking about the real estate market. I had a background in real estate already. I was a mortgage broker before the last crash. Um, and we were talking about, well, real estate finance. And, you know, the method just made sense, but then it was still, it was still that curve because, I mean, during that time that was COVID was at its peak, you know, had deals in the pipeline, you know, within the first couple of days, but literally struggled to get anything to, close to the closing table just because the lending market was just so tight. Um, you know, you'll get a yesterday and no tomorrow uh, type scenario. And then when we uh, made our transition in June, I actually elevated and got more behind the scene and was doing more of what we now is the AE role, where I was actually talking with the banks, looking at the products, looking at the guidelines. And then after that, I just kind of just really just focused in my conversations with myself and people that are on my team, like, okay, let's stick with where the bread and butter is at. Um, I, know to, I know that these particular prop, projects can sell. Um, working with some of the lenders, kind of figuring out where the nuances are. And again, just developing relationships. I mean, um, a couple of people on my team, literally, it, the reason why they finally had success is was they want, one were always accountable and they always put in the work. And what I mean by always accountable was that they didn't just do the one email and just drop the ball and say, okay, well, let's see what happens. No, they were diligent on following through and following up with their clientele base, um, keeping them apprised in the process when things didn't go as we expected 
we were there to say, look, I understand your frustrations, but we got you. Um, I think uh, really it's when you're speaking with your clientele and your relationships, it's conveying that they are in good hands, that you are going to be a great steward for them. You are the team member that's going to help them transition from where they're at now to where they hopefully will end up being. And that's really been the kind of the turn was just the fact that I had that hands-on grip on knowing what the lenders were, uh, were looking for. I knew which products were going to give my clients the best overall strategy. Um, a lot of the programs I work, I do, I've done a number of exposure limits with different guys on my team. Um, it's not the highest commission rate, but I'm, I'm a quantities guy. You know, I do lead generation for other clients. I, I like getting checks every other as much as possible. So my strategy has always been about getting with these, these uh, more experienced investors and helping them grow and give them a product easy for them to you know, the product makes it easy for them to keep on doing continual deals for me. So I'm doing more of a long volume play opposed to trying to hit the home run. I figure I can hit singles all day and still score. Great. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. And so really just to kind of um, summarize what, what you're saying there, it's you realize you needed to focus more on bread and butter, right? And sort of get your head out of the clouds with some of the more difficult deals or the bigger sounding projects or whatever it was, right? It came down to understanding the lender guidelines, right? And ultimately uh, leveraging that knowledge to gain the confidence of the client, right? And so really at the end of the day, uh, the only other a thing I think uh, we could draw a little bit more light on, Christopher, is what happens after submission? And really that is, that's where the deal actually begins, right? And then knowing where to go from there, but more importantly, inspiring the client and, and helping the client to understand that they can be confident in you to get that job done, right? Uh, but it's it's not as easy as just getting the application, is it? Application in, is it, Christopher? <laughs> well, not, you know, not at all. I mean, you know, the app, so if you really got to break down, it, it, it's, kind of four phases. Your first one is your prospecting marketing, your, your, your bringing awareness. Second step is your consultation. Third step is actually, all right, now we have a live deal. Now what? And literally it's the paperwork. Um, mm -hmm. What I find in most industries is that most people do what they do well, but the paperwork is what they don't, that tends to be the lacking item. And so when a lender is lending, after we say, okay, well, fine, there's a term, we now got to break down everything. Now we got to look at the bank statements. We got to make sure that the deposits make sense. We got to look at the corporate entities um, and make sure that those are correct. Uh, we got to make sure the operating agreements are, are signed correctly. We have to make sure the rehab budgets are, are, are in, on point. Because again, <clears throat> what I do like about the real estate side is the fact that at the end of the day, your client should be making a profit. Anna. So we're going to, the lender is looking at the, the, the scope of work on the rehab budget and making sure it makes sense and it, it fits with what the market's doing. Um, so it's just all these little nuances that come up. Um, you know, everybody deals with wholesalers and wholesaler contracts. Sometimes those contracts have to be worded the correct way. So there's a lot of little minuscule things that happen in the background that have to all line up ducks in a row before you're able to actually get to the funding table. Um, so understand that that process, um, if someone has all this stuff together, it can happen in two to three weeks. If, if not, it stretches out because, you know, uh, you know, you get appraisal issues. I mean, I don't know if anybody's had deals, but appraisers are charging a lot of money and taking a lot of time to get it done. Um, so, you know, they're charging uh, a surcharge. They're charging for two-week turnaround. Um, so there's all these little nuances. So you'll get sometimes uh, a buyer saying, well, they want to close on this date, but the reality is, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to cross the finish line. Right. And getting ahead of that and helping to guide the client to understanding what the landscape of the deal looks like, what the timing looks like, what real, realistic expectations are, stopping the client when they have unrealistic realistic, uh, expectations is really a really uh, just a big hurdle, right? And um, if you don't position yourself the right way with the client early on in that regard, it can cause issues. Is that correct? So yes, I mean, literally, you know, when it comes to them doing the rehab and, you know, doing what they got to do, that's where they're, they're, that's where they're proficient at. When it comes to working with a lender, um, we're a different conversation than what the gurus talk about. Well, oh, yeah, find someone with private money and there's loose terms and stuff like that. 
No, we're dealing with institutional lenders that will, aren't going to close their doors tomorrow or come out with wild terms. We, we, we offer consistency and a consistent path. However, we have to make sure our client meets that mold, and our job is to mold this rough piece of coal into this beautiful diamond that can get closed by any lender over and over again. Because they are rough around the edges. They're, they're just useful. Well, I did it this way. Oh, I got a half. Well, no, no, that's not how it's going to do. If we want to get this through, I need you to, re, to align yourself the way I need you to be done. And I'm there to coax you through it. Like, okay, look, once we get you lined up and I get you situated, life is easy. And, you know, and sometimes there is a little bit of back and forth, but the sooner you can kind of put your foot down and say, well, look, this is what it's going to take to get the deal done. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and be forceful on that and just be confident on that. Even when you're delivering the quotes, I mean, you'll talk to guys that are on the team, like Marcus, you know, what his big transition was. Was like, look, are, are you really ready to get the business? I mean, I, I think I read some posts where some people said, you know, they might have been here for a while and didn't get the activity they want. But literally in your conversations, are you asking for the business? And that's the first part of it. If you don't ask for the business, you're not going to get the business. If you come, um, if you sound unsure or unconfident in what you offer and what you bring to the table, yeah, they're going to go, go to somewhere else. I have no problem telling someone to go somewhere else for them to come back and at the end of the day, come back to me and say, oh, yeah, I went over there and you were right. You know, don't be afraid to let, let the fish go because truthfully being up front and, and dead, dead on point with a person in the beginning builds a better relationship long term. They come back to you over and over again because they know, hey, I ain't got to worry about it. He's going to take care of me. And that's what I usually convey with the, group, the, the people I work with. Absolutely. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Um, you know, and for everyone listening, there's a process to this and you need to go through your learning experiences. You need to fail, trip, stumble and fall, pick yourself up, dust yourself off. But if you're super respectful of the client and every person that you talk to, you want to have the perfect customer service and hear them out. You want to bring higher ups into conversations and, and talk about their business model and sign this non-disclosure agreements and all you, you're already headed down the wrong path. You have to simplify for yourself, right? They want funding for what? Do they qualify based on the questions that we need to ask? right all of a sudden he says jeff bezos millions of dollars i'm doing this i'm doing that i know the owner of target they want to get involved and build 500 more targets and blah 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 we need to get on a big conference call guys that's that's not what we do that's way too big of a conversation for an independent broker just looking to fund some deals that's that don't get all tied up in some big story because it's unrealistic it's not going to happen. And the person you're talking to is trying to leverage information because they don't qualify for funding. You want bread and butter deals, an experienced investor with cash in the bank, with a property lined up and in mind, ready to go, right? With business funding, a, a, uh, a business that's cash flowing, right? That needs money now, that has decent credit, that, can, that actually, actually has ownership of the business or ownership of the real estate they want to leverage for the business. They're forthcoming with documents. There's no fraud. There's no criminal history. They, these are the things that we need to know. And Christopher and our other team leaders learned a long time ago, you're not going to get anywhere playing possum with the client. You're not going to get anywhere by letting the client drive you and deem what's important. You know, I've had complaints from each of our team leaders, or excuse me, from affiliates um, on each of our team leaders' teams because they didn't like that the team leader was harsh with the client, was quick to tell the client, listen, I need this information. If you're not forthcoming with the information, this call's over. And they got all upset and wanted to, they're not treating my client the right way. Wrong. They're treating your client exactly the way they should be treated. And you have to listen and learn to, from these guys because they have been there before you. They have gone through it just like you. And unlike you, up to this point, they are regularly funding deals. And at a high multitude, but Christopher funded seven deals last month. You got another eight funding this month, right? With the trend upwards towards 10. That's what's up. 
That's what time it is. That's what everybody here wants, right? Everybody here wants to make 10 grand plus a month. Everybody here wants to make six figures. Listen to the guys who are doing it. Listen to the guys who are getting the job done. Consider that maybe you don't know what you're talking about when you think you have it all figured out. And your way is going to work. Listen to what those that are doing it and making money are doing. Listen to those and what their struggle has been up to the point of getting over that hurdle, right? Listen carefully and learn. Very important stuff. Christopher Van Buren, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Any other points you wanted to touch on before we, we move over to, to Sebastian? Yeah, I, I would just say kind of on the end point was just understand what side of the table you guys are on. Um, I understand both of you are new, but you're leveraging the knowledge of your group. And so when you spend more time on the client side of the table, like it's your money that they're, they're talking about it. Oh, well, how come you can't give it to me at 3% at bank rates? You know, understand that that's just not how it works out here and that you're on the lending side of the business. And so your positioning is different. I understand what my client wants, but they have to follow my lead more than I need to follow their lead. It's like, okay, I, I, I appreciate your experience. I appreciate you've done some things your way. However, you're now trying to go from the one or two deal kind of person to now successfully turning this into a real business. Anybody can hit a home run one time. But if, you're to, if you want consistency, then you need to do it the way I'm telling you so that way you can have that consistent pattern. And that's how I present everything. It's just like, look, whatever you did worked, but now you're trying to go, you're trying to do better. If you were doing four deals, I can get you to eight, but you're going to have to do it this way to get to that number. And your clients will respond to you in a much better way. I've had bumps and bruises with my clients. Like, hey, I don't want to talk to them no more. But then they're happy, like, oh, thank you for closing that deal. Thank you for getting back in contact with me. Because, you, you know, we all have egos. You know, you know, alpha guy, beta guy, whatever it is. It, at the end of the day, what the client wants is to get to the closing table. They want to, they want to close the deal. And as long as I can provide that, they could take a little bit of tough love in the beginning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Christopher. Um, definitely, definitely listen to those last words, right? Very, very important. I think uh, we have a lot of people who are a little fearful of the client, a little too respectful of the client, okay? A salesperson who earns their money and puts a roof over their head and clothes on their back, stop making that mistake a long time ago. Not that you should be disrespectful to the client, right? But that you got to realize, what is the value? What is the monetary value of speaking to this person right now? Is this conversation worth my time? Is it going to make me money? Is listening to this person's story on and on and on, running their mouth, is this going to make me money? Do we want to have another call now and, and listen to it again? Story time? No. Do we want to let the client drive and deem what's important? No. Right? We need to change the way we think. And if you do you're a lot closer to making money, right? Thank you, Christopher, thank you very much. Sebastian Tafreshi, you there, Sebastian? Hey, how's everybody doing today? Doing all right, Sebastian, doing all right. So please, man, tell us your experience, the ups and downs, the struggle, how you overcome, overcame the hurdles, right? What the key things were that really helped you start making money because you're making a lot of money right now. <laughs> Sebastian, it's, uh, it's impressive stuff. Um, and you're just getting better and better, right? So. Everybody wants to know what's the special sauce, right? What's the, how do we, how do we get there? How do we do that? So please enlighten us. All right. Hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, I just want to always tell everybody, Hey, consistency in anything is key. And that's the life relationships, uh, wealth, anything that you're always going to do is always going to require consistency and putting your best foot forward. I'm the kind of person that puts 150% into anything that I do. And I ended up turning this into my full-time career, not just a job. Um, for anybody that knows me or doesn't know me, I have a large background in management and sales. I used to run uh, multi-million dollar gyms in Chicago, did a lot of uh, pre-sales for gyms, ran a lot of gyms, ran large teams, loved doing it, did it for many years. Um, unfortunately, when Corona happened, I uh, was put into positions where a lot, of, a lot of gyms closed, and especially our gym that we just opened two years ago closed. Mind you guys, I was also doing business loans, a little bit of real estate, uh, also on the side, but I was forced um, by turning this into my full-time career uh, because I had no other choice. It was sink or swim for me. 
Um, I learned the best by trial by fire. And I put 100% of my effort going in there full time. And I'm the kind of person that I will study things, read about things on my own time. I want to understand it like the lender understands it. I want to understand what a loan is. I want to understand what the products are. I have to have a full understanding of everything so I'm able to speak to the clients. Um, and for me, that was that was key. I remember when I first started, when I connected with Gavin, you know, I was a little slow to, to get started with the program but when i did i took advantage of of ryan so much i was <laughs> i tried to pick his brain every chance that i could get i learned as much as i could and then when he wasn't available anymore i just went off on my own and i wanted to learn further and get more information that's when i even approached gavin i was like listen i want more i want to be more than just an affiliate i want to be more than just a student i want to be i want to be part of the team i want to understand how the whole process works and when i really understood that when I understood all the terms, all the conditions, when I knew everything like the back of my hand and studied it, that's really when I started progressing. Um, I'll tell you this, my first six months of ever doing business loans or real estate, slow. I didn't make money for six months. I had no shame. I saw people posting, oh, I have this kind of deal or I made this amount of money. You know, I got a little discouraged, but it is what it is. I'm not there yet, but I'll get there one day. Um, but it was a progression. The biggest thing for me, though, was just being consistent. I do this every day, all day, 10 hours a day, and I love it. And I have no problem doing it. And I would recommend to anybody, put all your effort into it because all that hard work pays off. That's really that's really the biggest thing for a lot of people is just that consistency factor. Um, when I first started, I was maybe funding also a deal, maybe two deals a month, you know, after those six months. But now it's becoming to 10 to 15. So it's just growing um, other than, you know, and this is a combination of business loans, uh, different types of affiliate programs that I do from like credit repair, uh, when we do the real estate loans. And it's not just one revenue source that I depend on. It's multiple. And I put everything together. So if one is falling a little short, I still have others to fall back on. Um, and that's really been one of the biggest things for me is just putting it all together. So I'm not so dependent on just one thing too, because I never want to be put in a position again, where if, if I'm working for somebody and they close, I have zero money. That was always my biggest fear. And I wanted to take control of my own destiny and figure out what I need to do for myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Sebastian. <clears throat> and Sebastian, regularly we have conversations you and I about is there and as well as with Christopher and David, and, you know, are there better products? Is there a different lender we should be taking a look at? Right. What more can we provide to the affiliates? Right. Credit repair is coming very soon for all of you. How can we create multiple avenues of earnings? And Sebastian is all over that front. All over. And remember, he just told you he wasn't making money doing this, but he kept going. He dedicated himself. And Sebastian, what are you making this month? Uh, so me. this month, uh, I will probably clear $25,000. $25,000. Just stop and think about that, everybody. For just just $25, stop and think about it for a second. If I told you today, it could take you three, maybe six months of not making any money, having difficulty, right? Getting frustrated. But at the end of that journey, if you went through it, you could make 25 grand in a month. On a bad month, 15 grand. On an average month, 20 grand. Would that change your life? Would that transform your life? Were you working for somebody else making 50, 60 grand? Sure, you got your benefits, right? You got your health insurance, you got your 401k, felt cozy, felt warm, felt like you had everything you need, but was it enough? And then stop and consider if you're willing to take a risk, if you're willing to get uncomfortable, if you're willing to work very hard and believe in yourself, will you be able to achieve that next level? Christopher did. Sebastian did. Can you? I think you can. It just comes down to being mentally tough. It just comes down to being consistent. It comes down to, to letting your ego go and listening to other people and what they have to say, especially when they've been there before, right? Um, <clears throat> I think, Sebastian, you and I can both agree you're no stranger to sharp teeth. 
right? And, and you have no problem telling a client to take a hike when they're not playing ball, right? Um, even times, Sebastian, right, we've had some one or two of your team members um, complain, right, that you're not being so nice, right? Can you talk to us a little bit more, Sebastian, about have, having, how having a mentally tough attitude and being a, a, a and valuing your time over the client's uh, story can prove to putting more money into your pocket? And pretty much in my position, as far as what I do, you know, I deal with all the lenders, title companies, insurance companies, you know, you deal with some of the borrowers, you deal with all the documents. I'm at the point of my, my stage where I, I don't have time for the BS. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want, I don't want to deal with the story. What do I going to have to hear this story for? Give me my bullet points. Let me figure out the numbers and I'll get the deal done for you. I don't care about anything else. And I, uh, you know, I always tell the client, Hey, uh, first call I'll do with them. I'll get the deal done. They love it. Um, you know, and, and this is what I promise them. We'll get it done. I'll work hard for you, which I will. And, but I'm not going to deal with complicated deals. If people are shy me I don't care I don't want to deal with it because this is too much time because now all of a sudden if I'm dealing with the client for an extra hour a day and he's shopping me or he's just kind of doing whatever it's wasting my time I'm not making my, any money I'm not putting any money in my pocket there's only one of me right now and I, I could only talk to so many lenders so many banks so many title companies so many this you know so many of you guys throughout the day and actually give everybody appropriate attention I just don't we don't have the time to deal with BS anymore and I like to just cut right through it because at the end the day I don't want to find out two weeks later I just wasted a, you know two weeks of my time for nothing um, and you know I also come from the gym industry so we're very quick to either just get a no yes tell me I'm not offended if you say no and there's always somebody coming up next there's never a shortage of people that are gonna be doing real estate there's never gonna be a shortage of people doing loans I'll just go I'll look for the next opportunity or just circle back with that person when they're a little bit more serious you know if, if uh, little Susie she's not so serious right now cool give me a call later you know but if Mrs. Jones is ready come on I'll give Mrs. Jones all the attention she wants because she she really she wants to move forward and she could tell she's serious today same thing in the gym industry you could tell when somebody's serious or somebody's kind of lollygagging along if somebody's serious you're gonna you're gonna give them the best presentation and you're gonna go the whole way with them absolutely absolutely and so Sebastian's pulling from his experience outside of funding right and taking those strengths and that experience and leveraging that here in this space right he understands how to identify a good client right off the bat so if you're on the phone with your team leader and you're talking to your client, and it seems like your team leader is losing interest, being a little fresh with the client, don't be so quick to defend your client. Remember whose team you're on. You're on Team Ion, right? There's a reason your team leader might be a little fresh or sharp with the client, right? Figure out why. Realize where maybe you took a wrong turn, where maybe you may have been a little bit naive, right? Got a little bit too much too sucked into the story, got sucked up in the hype, right? It's a valuable, valuable skill set to be able to cut through the bullshit. Excuse my language, but it's just the truth. Valuable. These guys have figured out how to do that. You heard Sebastian right there. I don't want to deal with the overly complicated deals. I don't want to hear it. Now, don't get me wrong. We have, we have David Lewis. Right. And Sebastian working, actually, Sebastian just closed and funded two massive, massive deals. I think both are six million dollars plus. Both have huge payouts. OK. And our affiliates earned as well off of those deals. OK. But it took a lot of bad eggs to find those deals. And we have more in the pipe now. We're getting even better at finding those deals early on. We're, we're, we're identifying through the data points, right? What those deals look like, what the personalities with the of the of those applicants look and sound like, right? And further picking up and make on that information and making data informed decisions, right? On how we go about calling, how we go about selecting lenders, how we go about qualifying, right? This is what it takes to make money in this business. Right? Sure, we had an affiliate come in and in their first week, bang, money. Sure, we've had affiliates come in and get a few deals going. We've had other affiliates have the opposite experience, okay? Who knows what yours will be? But if you listen, if you do the work, you will get there. Because both Christopher and Sebastian were affiliates just like you. 
they were just learning this stuff for the first time, just like you, right? So very important stuff. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you very much. Any other uh, uh, finer points, anything uh, we're missing here, anything you wanted to touch on before we move on to the next thing? Sebastian? Um, and just to, just to give you guys an idea, about a year ago, I couldn't even tell you what a dang fix and flip was. Um, <laughs> and it was, and I didn't know anything about real estate. It was, and it was my desire to, to learn everything that I could. And then now people always tell me, even borrowers, they're like, well, you could really talk the talk. You know what the heck you're talking about. I'm like, well, I sure hope I do because I feel like I've been doing this long enough. I feel like I've been doing this for 10 years now just because of how, so, how much of, I talk to it. And I'll tell you guys, just be consistent. The people that are going to succeed are the people that are bringing in consistent applications, trying to uh, learn and understand them, and also following up with those people. One big trend that I see, and this is an honest to God truth because I could see everybody steals in the entire system, uh, is follow up, follow up, follow up. And that's why I keep always mentioning it. I learned this from the gym industry very quick. You got to follow up. You got to follow up with your client consistently. I'll see somebody send in an application. Um, let's say maybe they're not qualified. The deal's dead for whatever reason. There's no follow-up. There's no emails being sent. There's no text being sent, or at least nothing at least tracked in the CRM for me to see. I mean, it just shows me that there's no follow-up, and maybe some people just don't care. Um, the biggest thing is follow-up with those clients, be on them, communicate with them. The people that are going to be able to build good relationships with their borrowers those are the people that are succeed and bring in consistent applications there i got a couple of my guys that are bringing in maybe an application or two every day those are the people that are succeeding those are the people doing good if you're bringing in one a week every other week and you're holding on to that one deal and it's kind of a crappy deal or going nowhere and you know hoping to god maybe it'll fun it, you know praying is never it's just just praying and hoping like that without any substance it's, it's not going to help um, so be consistent. It's, it's, it's volume. You want to bring in volume and you'll quickly, you know, you'll get one. Absolutely. Thank you, Sebastian. Absolutely. And so volume is everything with enough volume. The lender respects you. They won't steal your deals. They'll be looking to fund your deals because they want to keep you happy. So you keep submitting volume as long as the data you're submitting is qualified, right? Qualified applicants, good data. Okay. Now, both Christopher and Sebastian have plenty of volume, right? It's not just your deals, guys. It's their deals, too. It's the combo of both. This is an opportunity that's available to each and every one of you. You can work your own deals. You can manage a team. You can have a ton of volume and consistency, and you can make your money. You've got to unlock the advanced training. You've got to engage in the advanced training. You've got to take a look at our lender grid and guidelines. You've got to understand how to look at a file, then look at our, our, lend, our lender information, figure out which product or products, why, which lender, why. And you quickly understand, well, wait a minute. So all I need to do is ask the client these questions, take a look at what's being offered by the lender, match it up and figure out, okay, this lender, this lender, and this lender, that product, that product, and that product. That's what they qualify for. Now, what makes sense for the client? What's the best rate? What can I package together? How can I make more money? Right? That's where your head needs to be. And once you figure that out, I'm telling you, it takes one time for you to figure that out and to put money in your pocket, and it changes the way you think about everything. It changes the way you speak to your client about how you feel about yourself when talking to the client. And that's noticeable by the client. Like this person is on top of their game. They know what they're, what they're talking about. They know what time it is. They have energy. I like this person. All of a sudden, when you know, they trust you. They don't go to another broker. They like you. They want to follow you, right? Now, Sebastian and Christopher have a bit different strategies, right? Sebastian will look at pretty much any deal because he's very, very good at identifying whether or not that's a deal that's going to make money, right? Whereas Christopher, Christopher likes to find an experienced investor, somebody with a portfolio, somebody with a lot of exits in the year who regularly is flipping homes, right? And as a result, he'll get four or five deals out of that person sometimes in the month. Stop and think about that for a second. One client, one lead, five deals. 
There's different avenues. There's different ways. You can get niche. You can cast a wide net. There's a lot of different things you can do. And for those of you who, who want to try and focus on construction, man, there's nothing better than finding a real estate investor who's also in construction. They need money for the purchase. They need money for the rehab. They want to cash out, refi to eject cash. They need new equipment, so they want equipment financing. They need help with payroll. They want a line of credit, right? Even though that should never be the use of funds when you're communicating with the lender, right? They were impacted by COVID-19. They need relief. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? They, there's all kinds of products that you can package and put together, but you won't know how to do that if you're just focused on real estate funding. You won't know how to do that if you're just focused on business funding. You won't know how to do that if you think you know everything there is to know about business funding because you did cash advance for a little while from home. You don't. There's, there's tr uh, tons of products out there, all better than a cash advance. Do you know how they work? Your competitor does. Did you work on a sales floor on a corporate level? If you didn't, consider the fact that maybe you should listen to the guys who have been there before because I have. I know what it looks and sounds like. I know how to actually make money because that's how I provided for myself. These are important, important lessons. But if you go through it, if you get through it, I promise you, we will make money. It's just not everybody makes it through. Not everybody has what it takes. It's just the truth of the matter. And that's much more realistic when you look at the way life plays out for all of us, right? Not everybody becomes a millionaire. Not everybody wins the race. Participation trophies are great, but at the end of the day, somebody wins, somebody loses. You have to be realistic about that outcome. And so the building blocks really are <clears throat> identifying problems within yourself. Identifying what hurdles you haven't been able to overcome. Being able to step away from your ego, right, and listen to others. Ask yourself, are you really putting in the time it takes to be successful? Do you really care about this? Or are you just happy to hand off at a certain point because you'd rather trust somebody else with it than you, right? You're never going to get to that next step until you take, you roll your sleeves up and you take that bull by the horns. It's just the way it goes. And, and that's something we all can believe in, right? Because that's the way we know life to be, right? But if we're over here telling you, come on in. Super easy. A couple of weeks later, you're making 10 grand a month. It's easy. It's great. Everyone can do it. La, 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 la. We, that, guys, it's a bunch of BS. If Gavin was a YouTuber, right, out there saying to everybody, come join my program. I have a blueprint, which is a, a thumb drive filled with PDFs, and it's just me. And I make my money by recruiting. I'm not a broker at all. And if you buy this thumb drive for me for, for whatever this price is, you'll be rich. It's just unrealistic. And there's so many guys and people out there with training programs doing exactly that. That's not who Ion is. We are an active brokerage, funding deals and making money. And we're a training program. We have recruiters. We have brokers. We have IT. We have team leaders. We have processors. We have ongoing, uh, ongoing lender networks and products. We're the real deal. And each and every one of you would not have an opportunity to be part of that, right? And so this is the message we're trying to convey to all of you, right? Uh, and we're trying to light a fire under your butts because some of you are making money, but not all of you, right? There's guys here, affiliates here who were not making any money, who have been with us for, for, for several months now, who are finally making money money because they started listening and sometimes it takes that long to just start listening for others could happen today you just have to dig in you have to listen all right um <clears throat> no different i was a uh, my, my brother chris and i were uh hockey coaches we love playing hockey Our whole lives we played hockey and every kid came to the rink with their parents and every kid wanted to go to the nhl but not every kid wanted to do sprints at the end of the session to do some conditioning. Not every kid wanted to get uncomfortable and sweat 
and have muscle pain and all these things. Is that kid going to be successful? No. Not every pet parent wanted to listen. Not every parent wanted to pay. Not every parent wanted to get up in the morning at 5 o'clock in the morning and bring their kid to the rink before school to train or on the weekend or whatever. But those that did, those kids flew out there, man. Those kids made the team. And those kids grew up to play college and professional hockey. It's wild. But it's the truth. It just comes down to the people that are willing to do what it takes. And so the question we want all of you to walk away with today is, are you one of those people? Do you have what it takes? Are you going to commit yourself to this? Are you going to stay tough? Through the hard times, are you going to pick yourself up and keep going? Or are you going to call it quits? Are you going to point finger, fingers? Are you going to blame others? Hit the reset button, start over again, try something else. It's not a good look. It's not what you want to do. What you want to do is strike gold, strike oil, right? Make it happen, right? Stop searching, make it happen. Okay, everybody? Um, Nail right on the head, people. Leadership team, anything else? David Lewis, anything you wanted to add? Um, <clears throat> uh, actually, yeah. I mean, Sebastian said it a lot, and you know, <laughs> I've complained about it too, but uh, when – you know, when the client gets involved and they're telling you and you hit this point, too, it's like, oh, you know, I, I want to build 500 more targets or something like that. That's totally unrealistic. That's totally just way so far out there that it's kind of like, yeah, right. You know, unless you're talking to 15 different bankers that have literally billions in their pockets, this deal isn't going to happen. Um you know, we've developed the kind of thick skin to be able to get through that and just say, look, dude, I don't really care about your story. You know, I, I don't really care about your whole business plan and stuff like that. What deal do you have right now? What are you looking for? And let's see if we can get you funded. But, you know, it's important for everybody else. And I did the same thing as an affiliate was that, you know, you, you, you start getting stars in your eyes and you start seeing dollar signs everywhere. And it's kind of like, oh, I'm going to make all this money if this deal goes. And the big question is, if that deal closes, and the whole thing is that, you know, and I've seen a lot of people, you know, on my team, you know, stories, everything else is just like, you know, they're, they're searching for every little thing that can make them, you know, rich or something like that. You know, it's it, it's that mentality of when you get this little tidbit of information, you just want to go after it. And there's you know, the, that level of tenacity where you want to go after it and just get it done and, you know, be like a you know really crazy dog and just, you know, not let go until somebody shoots you or something like that. But, you know, the reality is, it's just like, you know, Chris is looking for the same thing. Sebastian is looking for the same thing. I'm looking for the same thing. Is this what is actually going to happen? You know, is this realistic? And is this going to get to the closing table? So the same thing with, you know, having thick skin with going through these uh, <clears throat> clients that have these big, huge stories and everything like that. Like you said, they're probably lying. They probably don't qualify. And, you know, I've seen it before. We've had conversations with clients, big, long conversations that kind of, OK, oh, hey, all I need is an application. Application never comes in. You know, there may be even some follow up behind that, but still the application never comes in or it's so far <laughs> from being a qualified application that that conversation was a complete waste of time. Yeah. So, you know, and it's the same thing with, um, you know, being an affiliate, you know, you, yes, you have to go through it just like Gavin said, and it sucks, but you got to go through it, but you got to understand that there's going to be a level that you're going to reach that you can look at the same thing too and go, okay, well, unless you're going to get me X, Y, Z, I'm not even going to bother with this. So, and it's, it's the same thing. So, I mean, if I can encourage everybody to just kind of step back a little bit, don't be like that dog, just, you know, be more like a leader, step back and go, is this realistic? You know, is this really going to happen? Or, you know, am I chasing after this loan that's going to take me four weeks to get funded and I'm going to get three or $400, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. So Absolutely. that was my, you, <laughs> that was my sense for this week. <laughs> Thank you, David. David is Lewis is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. He's just a sweetheart <laughs> of a guy. He really is. And yet, he got over that hurdle. He understands that now, right? Um, 
Yeah. Whereas maybe in the past, David, right, you were willing to talk to people and listen to people, and you realize now it's just a waste of your time. David has a couple massive deals in his pipeline right now. One of them's about to pay out real pretty. But I have to yeah. be honest, in reviewing what David and I are reviewing his team, there's a few members on his team who are awfully comfortable with their one or two deals. What happens when the act of God happens and that deal doesn't fund? Are mm -hmm. you prepared? What ha are you right? Right? Are you prepared yeah. with a decent pipeline with more deals coming in to where you can still make money? Right? If a couple of you, you're on the call, you know I'm talking about you, right? Yep. Don't just sit back and wait for that one deal, people. We need you need to have an active pipeline, a multitude of deals ready to go with more coming and working on more today and working on more tomorrow so that you never get caught in that position yep right but anyway guys um gerald phillips so like this oh, I, I was ryan Go ahead. the other day i'm sorry i was telling uh ryan the other day i was like i actually cry every time a deal closes because it's like that means i already need something in there already so the closing is, is kind of the sad part it's like literally it's, do i have more work in there because it's the reset close is gone the money's set it's like dude you're done so i, I want to know i close and, oh wait i got oh three four more things working on and that's the, the the mentality i think a lot of people and it's easy um if you're not surrounded in the right circles to get down you know like what are you doing there's this uncertainty this is you have to be able to be balanced in an unstable world and once you get that hang of it you, you'll start seeing that consistency most I, unfortunately i've seen a lot of people put in the initial activities to get to a certain point and then drop off, losing all that work and losing all the momentum. It's a momentum game. So if, if, when you're feeling down in blue, I understand that. But, you know, sometimes you just got to give yourself the five-second pity party, but then, up, oh, I got to get back to what I got to do. Because whatever drove you to make a career change should be the reminder of why you need to stay on, this, stay on your path. Um, because your other alternative is what? To go back to something you didn't love. This is your opportunity Take the bumps and bruises, but understand that, that you are building yourself up and you're not building someone else's dream. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you, Christopher. Um, so listen, I think I think we pretty much said it all. It was a good call here. Gerald Phillips, can, can you leave us with some uh, words of wisdom here for the end of the call? Thanks, Ryan. Uh, okay. Guys, it, it's all about being consistent and, and committing to everything that that you want. If you're just going to go at it, you know, I hate to use the term, but if you're going to go at it half-ass, you're going to get half-ass results. So if you don't commit to it, you don't stay the course, you're going to be stuck where you're at right now. So just commit, be consistent, be consistent. Always review what you're doing. Always review it. Because you never know. You may be doing something wrong. That's why we go back and we'll review. That's why we have conversations with our team leaders. That's why, that's why they're doing the things that you want to do because they know how to go back and review and change the things that aren't making them progress. So just be consistent. Ask a lot of questions. A question unasked is the only stupid question. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you very much. Gerald is our mindset coach. For those of you new joining, uh, if you want to continue down the road of this, this conversation, reach out to Gerald. Mindset is a huge part of being a salesperson, and it's very commonly overlooked, which is actually quite funny because you can spend your time being extremely excited or frustrated or whatever it is, right? You're in that moment. You don't realize that you're ha having those overwhelmingly positive or, or uh, uh, negative thoughts, right? And that's mindset. You need to correct that. You need to balance yourself out. You need to understand how your brain works. You need to understand there's going to be high highs and low lows, and you have to be strong through it, a rock, right? And it's not that easy. You, you need to think about it. You need to strategize. You need to, to, to organize yourself, 
right? And to touch on what Christopher Van Buren was just saying a moment ago, you're not if you're not using your client lists and trackers, if you're not hitting your targets on your on your trackers, right? If you're not doing that daily outreach, if you're not expanding your approach and all these things, you don't have that consistency, right? And without that, it's not gonna it's not gonna work for you. It's just not. You, you've got you you have got to do what we're showing, not your version of it, not what you deem important, not what you think is gonna make you successful. You have to listen to those that have done it before. Do what they've done, and if you do that, you will be successful. Period. And when you get over that hurdle and you're in that arena and you want to make some adjustments, you want to bob or weave or whatever because you think you have a bet. Okay, fair enough. But not before. You can't skip the process. All right, people. Anyway, terrific call. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we did run out of time. We're not going to do questions on this call, but every week we're doing questions, so not to worry. Next Monday, we'll have another Q&A. You'll have your opportunity to ask questions, and you know me. I'll call out each and every one of you who are shy to speak in front of the group, and we'll hear from me and see how you're doing, all right? Thanks, everybody. Have a terrific week. Uh, good luck. Let's get going, all right? We'll see you soon.